All right, good afternoon. Uh, today we're gonna install Cali Purple. I've been asked by a lot of students lately, hey, have you tried Cali Purple? What do you think of it, yada, yada, yada. I, I really haven't. Uh, I usually have used Cali on a normal basis, uh, but today I'm, I'm finally gonna take the plunge. I'm going to download Cali Purple and see what it's all about. Um, but I figured while I was doing this, I get a lot of students that are asking me, hey, how do I download and get Kali to work in VirtualBox? Um, new students that are into cybersecurity, maybe they're setting up their home lab for the first time. They're just a little bit confused on how this process entire works, and it's not as simple as it used to be. Uh, there's a few extra steps. It's not overly difficult by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but definitely not as simple as it used to be where you could just double click on it. But the first thing we need to do is download Kali. So if I hit get Kali and I want to just download the regular version of Kali, I can hit that virtual machines right there. And then I've got my little options and I would just do virtual box right here. But today, today we're going to download purple. Uh, and if I remember correctly, purple is a little bit up. Uh, that's right. It's around here somewhere. I was, I've, I've looked for this thing for like three times and there it is. If I scroll down a little bit, there it is. Cali purple. I would hit that little button right there and it would uh, it would populate and start downloading for me. Now I've already got it downloaded. I am using VirtualBox 7.08 currently in my system. Uh, and with that, there's you can see my other machines right there. So let's get started. I'm going to do a new device. I'm gonna call it Kali Purple. I like to put the version 2023.1. Uh, I like it moving right where it's supposed to already go. And then type is going to be a Linux system. And then we are looking at a 64-bit and Debian system, 64-bit Debian. I'm gonna throw that right in there and hit that next button. Uh, it's gonna ask me how much RAM I wanna use. I'm going to push that up to about eight. Uh, I've got plenty to spare, so not a big deal. And then number of processors, you don't wanna go over 50% on either one of these, and I recommend staying around 25% normally. Uh, I've got quite a few to spare, and I like to, my, my Kali box to move with a little bit of speed, which means I'm gonna put it right at four processors more than enough for what it can run. And then total hard drive space, I'm gonna put that at 80. Uh, it only really needs 20, but it's be dynamically allocated as well. So not a big deal if I don't do that or don't use the whole 80. Uh, it's not like I'm taking the whole 80 gigabytes of space. So if you're, you're short on space, uh, you can put them more space. I recommend you do that. It's always easier at the very beginning than at the end. Uh, but I would, put, I would put a little bit of extra space in there. Remember, it's not taking all that space at once. I'm gonna hit next and I'm gonna let it do its thing. And now I've got it down there, 2023 Cali Purple. I do need, however, to change some settings. Now, before I do settings, this is if your first time that you've ever messed around with Cali or VirtualBox, we need to do uh, a few changes, right? I'm gonna go to File, and I'm gonna go to Tools, Network Manager, and you can see in Network Manager, if I go to NAT Network right there, you'll notice that I have NAT Network. I've also got a pineapple for one of the other labs that I run, but NAT Network is there. That's the one we're looking for. If you don't see, NAT network right there, you're just gonna hit the create button. That's it. It'll save you some time in the future. Um, make sure that that's there, okay? I have it there, so we are good. I'm gonna go back to my Cali Purple and we're gonna start going through some of the settings. Uh, right off the bat, I've got that general setting. I like to put that Cali Cali right there. And I'm gonna go to advanced. I want bi-directional in there. I wanna be able to copy and paste. I wanna be able to drag and drop. Uh, I've never actually used the drag and drop feature, but I use the clipboard all the time and I want that available to me. I can also go to description if I wanted to add there. Maybe I've got a certain device. Uh, I believe Cali Pally is going to be the username and password for this. Um, I'm gonna throw that in there as the description just in case they forget. Uh, watch it not be the same and I have to start researching it and find it, but I believe it's the same. Uh, I'm gonna go to system next. You can see those eight gigs of, uh, of RAM. I'm gonna go down to porting device, change that to PS2. Uh, I'm good on that point. Go to processor, again, I've got that four and then it doesn't really need accelerator. We're gonna keep that the same. I'm gonna to go to storage. Uh, my IDE, I need to fix that. So I'm gonna hit the empty and I'm gonna find that file. So I'm going to choose a disk. Now I've already got it there because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about before I started doing this video. But if I didn't, I would find that downloadable file. You can see that I've got it in my downloads. There it is. I click on that and just open it. It's gonna populate into there. I'll be good to go. I'm gonna to go to network next. I'm gonna change that to that NAT network that goes in that very first point that we put in there. If you're seeing this as blank, you missed step number one. Then I'm gonna to go to USB. I'm gonna check that out. If I've got the developer cool kit, uh, I'm good to go. If you don't, if you didn't download the extra step there for, for VirtualBox, you may wanna unclick the USB. There was a bug in there for a long time. I don't know if they ever fixed it, to be honest. 
Uh, but if you start to run into issues and it's just not behaving the way mine is, one of the very first problems I see is that enable USB. Just click that off. All right, that should be good. We should be good to go. So I'm going to press OK. And then we are going to run it and see what happens. And so let's see if I look like a fool or not as this thing boots up. And hopefully I don't look like an idiot. Let me close this out. We don't need to auto capture. Okay, good deal. So I've got that graphics installed right there. I'm just going to press enter and it should start to install Kali for us and we should be good to go. Now I am seeing this little bit of an error. I don't think it's going to matter. We should be good. And here we go. Yep. So English, I'm just going to hit continue. Oh, doesn't want to like me. That's fine. I'll use the enter button. United States, enter. American English, enter. And then it's going to go through this. Okay. Don't worry. If you're getting that screen capture like I am, it'll disappear in a little bit once we get it fully booted up. So it's going to go through the steps. Now, why would I want a Kali box? Why would I want uh, Linux inside my system, whether it's purple or regular? Well, if you're getting into cybersecurity, the, the idea is that you understand how to get into a basic Linux system, how you can maneuver around a basic Linux system. And believe it or not, there are quiz questions in Security Plus, as well as some of the other certification exams that have to do specifically with Linux. Uh, they're not very in-depth. It's not like you need to know this like, a, like anything else, right? You're not expected to go through and know it like the back of your hand, but you should know basic features of Linux. And you can see that I'm just doing the defaults as we move through there. Um, I'm not even messing around with the username account. Oh, it's username entered as valid. That's fine. We'll, we'll name a new username. I'm going to name it Kendrick, my last name. There we go. Uh, password. I, I use my same password. Now, some people will yell at me. I'm going to use Tor, T-O-R, and people are like, oh, wait, don't tell people your passwords. Well, I, I really don't care, to be honest. For a lab-type setting, I don't mind. Okay? And I am in Arizona, which means I am down here. And it's going to do its thing. Uh, so you should know how to change directory. You should be able to, you know, do a basic list. You should be able to do a lot of the, the basic functions that come with getting around a basic Linux system. Um, and that's all that's really required in a lot of this. And again, I'm just doing the, the basics, default settings for all of this. You can see how concerned I am with this because it is a virtual lab. I'm not too in depth with it. We'll keep on going through. Okay, I feel like I've seen this screen before. Like it's it's asking me. Uh, we'll keep doing it. The following petition. Okay, if you could see the further shares listed below, it will be written to this. Otherwise, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna write the changes. That's fine. I was I was going into a loop. Uh, this is what happens when you don't pay attention to what you're doing when you're just talking. Um, so a lot of the times what we'll be looking for for Security Plus is basic understanding of a Linux platform, right? You should understand, regardless of whether it's Ubuntu or Kali or any of the other forms of Linux, how to just basic functionality on how to get around there, right? You should be able to go and say, oh, this is my IP address. This is how I do this. This is how this, right? Uh, Secure Plus doesn't go big time into the depths of, of a Linux system, but the expectation is that you understand basic concepts of a Linux system. So it's a good idea to go ahead and get into this. Um, I do know that, that most people hiring in cybersecurity expect you to be able to get around it. And Linux is a great operating system. There's really not a lot wrong with it. It's very, very lightweight, as you probably saw. Um, I know people that get into Linux and they realize how powerful this operating system really is, and then they never actually use Windows again. Now, uh, I always get asked one or two questions. What's my favorite operating system? It's usually the first. Uh, and Linux is definitely up there, uh, but I am biased. I, I will admit I like Windows, and, and I know a lot of true IT professionals are going to boo and hiss at me when I say that, and that's okay. But a lot of the reason I like Windows is because uh, IT, which is kind of where I came up with, right? I, I started in the telecommunications, the signal, and that kind of thing, that field before I got into big time IT a lot of systems are using IT. And so I tell students that you should really know how to use a Windows system, uh, especially if you're in the true IT track, right? And we're not talking about um, programming. We're not talking about developing software. We're not talking about that aspect of it. We're talking about true IT track, which is where a lot of the students that I teach are, are in, right? And in that case, you need to understand a Windows system. And the reason I say that 
is because most of the systems, most of the operating systems that you'll be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis are, in fact, Windows, not, not uh, Mac. They're not other devices. They are truly Windows systems. Um, and I probably just messed up on a, on a click there, turning off the desktop. But just understand that, that Windows is the lifeblood of a lot of different systems that you're going to be operating on. And so if you are a Mac person, and I've seen students like this all the time, they, they get into this, this crutch of saying, well, I know Mac, Mac's a superb operating system to Windows, and they do this, and they do this, and they have nothing but great systems to say about Mac. Uh, and while I wholeheartedly disagree, uh, the fact is is that you will be using Windows quite often in the IT realm uh, for most users, right? Most people are going to be working on help desk technologies, or they're going to be working on endpoint response, or so on and so forth. And unfortunately, a lot of those a lot of those softwares at a SOC and at a NOC are Windows based. We're getting away from that Linux foundation of of, of systems of that software, um, and almost nobody that I know of uses a Mac system at an enterprise level. Now, I'm always going to have somebody that comes up and says, I use Mac for this and I use Mac for that. And that yeah, yeah, I get it. But what are 90% of the jobs using? Well, they're using Windows systems um, or they're using Linux and Mac is dead last. And so if you're in IT, if you're in cybersecurity, if this is where you're going, I, I would tell you to learn how to use a Windows system if you're a Mac person. Um, the next thing I get from students and from professionals are like, well, Mac's such a superior system. It runs VMware, it runs all the same systems, and it does it better because it's more closely aligned to Linux and data. And I listen, you're not you're not telling me anything I already don't know. I, I've heard all these arguments before. But if you can show me one company where the predominant operating system is a Mac, then yeah, that's you should learn how to use a Mac. But I would I would argue and even bet money on the fact that you can't prove to me one company, one real company with over 500 employees that is using Mac as their primary operating system. If you can prove that to me, then I, I'll, I hate to say I'll eat my shorts, but I mean, that's, that's how confident I am that you're not going to find a company that uses predominantly Mac. Now, there are exceptions to the rules, right? A lot of graphics companies use Macs. Uh, a lot of companies that, that do a lot of graphic interface or they, they use video editing software or they do anything else like that, yeah, those companies are predominantly Mac. But for the most part, and that's why I say 90% of companies are using Windows. And so I just, for me personally, I just can't see it in my head why anybody would learn how to use Mac and become an expert at Mac-based systems when a majority of the jobs are going to be in, in Windows or in Linux. Okay, so I, I got to this screen and it says to install a grub loader. And I noticed that I probably didn't tell any of you guys how to actually get around on this. You can hit the tab button. Let me scroll over here. I can hit the tab button and it'll provide me with what I want to do. And if I want to press the up arrow and down arrow, I can go through this. In this case, I am actually going to install the grub loader. And I'm just going to enter, put that one in there. Continue and let it continue to do its things. Uh, the other thing, if you see your screen go black and you're like, holy cow, is it done? Is it not done? What's going on here? Uh, just hit the over arrow as you're tabbed into the into the window and it'll bring back up the loading screen. I know some students get a little bit concerned and they, they think it's not working for whatever reason. Just, just hit an arrow on there. It'll bring back up the loader. Um, I'm hitting on, I think, almost, almost 30 minutes now waiting for this thing to finish up. Uh, this is not something don't be a rush in for if you're involved in this just uh, take a break go watch a episode of friends or whatever your favorite TV show is while you're while you're installing this but definitely don't do this last minute if you're doing it for a course that's for sure all right after some more default clicks which I didn't make you guys watch uh, we're back at the screen now I'm hoping that the username and password is Cali Cali and but we'll find out soon enough if I have to uh, have to go searching for it ah don't don't be like that. Don't be like that. It is like that. All right, I guess I'm pausing the video to go search for username and password now. So I know someone's going to laugh at me and they're going to be like, "Hey, hey, didn't you put in the password when you're doing the setup for this thing?" And yes, yes I did. And no, I was not thinking. All right? So Obviously, my uh, my username was the username that I provided, which it asked for if I if I was paying attention, and then the password was the password that I set up. So in my case, it was Kendrick and Tor. Uh, let the let the laughing comments begin for my for my stupidity and uh, that aspect of it. All right, so Cali Purple looking pretty good. 
what we got here? I've got uh, a terminal emulator. Let me see kind of apps I got here. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I love Terminator. Is Terminator on here? I'm gonna, let me see. Let me see if the root Terminator, and da da da. Put that sucker in there. Will it let me do it? Can I cut it? Oh, I can. Okay, so I do have Terminator in here, which is that root terminal right there. Will it let me do it on this one? It does. Okay, so Terminator comes with it, which is a blessed change um, from the last one, right? So I haven't downloaded since 2019, I think was the last time I, I actually used a different one. So that's that's nice. Uh, let me just close that out. Okay, so one of the first things I want to do is I want to do a sudo apt I think it's install. No, that's not install. It's update, upgrade, and then and and upgrade. So sudo apt upgrade. Oh, update. I'll tell you what, I need to go back to bed apparently. Update and upgrade, and then it'll ask me for the password, and then it'll go through this process. Uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and get through this as quick as possible and let it go through the first time you set it up. And it appears like uh, there were no real updates for this which is 433 packages can be upgraded, da 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 uh, it's not up to something. Okay, so sudo apt upgrade. I don't know why it didn't hit that list. And yes, and we'll go through that. All right, so it's upgrading all the items. Uh, we'll go through, but this is Cali Purple. I will let you know what I think when I'm done with this, but uh, this is the new one. So, huh, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm gonna end this video here, as always. If you have a video or if there's a lab or something that you want um, me to take a look at, feel free to throw it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Have a great one, everyone.